Hello, oh, Danny Jacob here. Today we're looking at Arcosa in the construction engineering industry. Three seven billion market cap, four point two billion enterprise value. Growth has been very slow. Twenty sixteen to twenty twenty three looks like low double digits, but there was a huge drop in twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen to where you're looking at about a percent a year from twenty fifteen to twenty twenty three. We're seeing earnings relatively flat over that same period and return on invested capital in the mid single digits. So nothing to brag home about. Balance sheet shows 105 million, short term debt 7 million, long term debt 562. That $500 million is on a five year average basis. You're probably looking at about 150 million here. So probably just under. A little over three years, let's say, their five year actually cash flow for their debt. So, nothing that's terribly concerning. Uh, obviously, all else equal, lower debt, the safer the investment, but um, I don't think there's enough debt here to really be concerned about it. Their use of cash is pretty heavy on acquisitions, at least in the last couple of years. Uh, very minor stock repurchases. Looks like it essentially offsets their stock based compensation. So, we should have seen relatively flat share change. Um, but all any, any sort of growth they have is coming from acquisitions, uh, which is decreasing their operating margin and gross margin. So it doesn't look like they're necessarily the most efficient acquisitions. So if we're ready to start making some assumptions here, I uh, feel pretty decent about 3 and 13, saying that it grows 3% a year for the next seven years, 13 terminal P at the end of this time period due to the fact that you know, a little bit less than market average. Their return on invested capital isn't substantial, and I don't think their growth is really that impressive. Margins, maybe let's do six and seven, zero share change. And they don't pay a dividend, or they do actually. Let's see. They pay a point two dividend. That dividend pays out $10 million, which is essentially nothing, but they haven't increased it the last five years. So we're probably good keeping that the same. And at this moment in time, it looks a bit expensive. Definitely companies companies like this, we're going through our generic stock streamer. We might see really good companies, but some might be like this where they're not, you know, the most impressive business. That doesn't mean there's not a price to pay for this. I mean, think about it. If this was the fourth or fifth best construction engineering uh, company in the industry, you would say, oh, like, blah, 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 I'd rather own, I don't even know other construction engineering comes off the top of my head, but even if it's the fourth or fifth best, it could be by far the best value. And so to me, if this were selling at a, you know, five or six PE, then yeah, that's probably a pretty good deal as long as the PE, you know, their earnings haven't jumped and it doesn't look like a inflated PE then yeah, it's, that's a great investment. But what we're going to have to realize going through this generic stock screener is that unless the company truly is really good, you're going to want to get it for a pretty cheap price because there's not a lot going for it. The, the first screener I did was dividend yield. Investors love dividends because if you pay a dividend, you're usually pretty consistent. And so you're a consistent business and people love consistency. So that's one of the big things, keeping them a somewhat premium, all else equal again. And then the fundamentals we looked at Businesses with higher than 15% return on invested capital, return on assets, and return on equity. And if you have the ability to reinvest back in yourself at a high rate of return and you do, you absolutely deserve a premium. And the market, from the market's perspective, a lot of them don't know that you even need to reinvest in that rate. You just have to have a high return on invested capital. So you could buy back as many shares as possible, inflate that number a bit, and the market's going to be like, oh my gosh, this is a great investment. They can get such a good uh, investment reinvesting back in themselves, even though they don't. But in this screener, again, like I said, we're going to see some companies that are meh, some that are great. Just keep in mind, in my perspective at least, and I think um, I think it should be, you know, the same for general public. Everything has a price for it. You know, a business that's producing 150 million a year in operating profit has abs absolutely has a price to it. If the company doesn't make any money and you don't see any perspective way of it making money, then yeah, there's not a price to it necessarily. But to me. If they have an operating margin, a free cash flow margin, there's definitely a price to pay that would make sense and for this to be a great investment. But again, just a little ramble going on. I think currently it's a bit expensive here, but I do hope you enjoy the video and have a great day. Thank you.